Hello everyone, and we got some interesting news for you. Hong Kong is finally going to approve their ETFs. Rumors say next week. Now, Hong Kong by itself isn't a big deal. I think it's a city of like seven, eight million people. But you have to remember, a lot of Chinese business interests have holdings in Hong Kong and they use Hong Kong as a proxy to get things they want. So there could be a lot more investment money than just Hong Kong itself. And Hong Kong seems to really want this because its regulators have sped up the ETF approval process, which is really nice. Hong Kong is likely to approve the first set of apps for spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds this week. A total of four entities have submitted applications to launch Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong. That's very, very nice. And although the Chinese regulations themselves won't open up to the mainland, which means that peasants won't be able to buy the ETFs, the fat cats and the corrupt government officials will be able to buy the ETFs. Now, we don't like fat cats and government officials, but if they want to pump our bags, you know, I'm actually okay with that. Because, you know, if the uh, peasants can't pump the bags, then the fat cats and the government officials, they can pump the bags. They're the one with the money anyways. The average Chinese citizen does not have a huge amount of disposable income, but the fat cats and the government officials, oh, they have government income, or they can just corrupt it out of other people. So Hong Kong regulators are likely to approve the first set of applications for spot Bitcoin uh, ETFs next week, making it possible that their products could be ready to uh, start trading in April. Um, basically, like by the end of this month, the products will be there, and I think there's going to be a wave of buying, just like there was in the United States. I don't think there's going to be a situation like FTX in China and Hong Kong, um, because, you know, they already made all those people disappear. So I do actually think that there's going to be a wave of buying, smaller than what we had in the United States, because regular people aren't uh, able to buy it. But a lot of the uh, big money in China is going to come in. So that should be a boost by the end of this month. Plus the halving should send us to 80K, hopefully. Um, basically, like they've sped up the approval process. It looks like there's a lot of people in Hong Kong that are just like really antsy to get their hands on some of the Bitcoin. And that's actually like really good news because that indicates that there's a lot of demand for the Bitcoin and there's probably going to be a, at least some billions of dollars flowing in uh, when the Bitcoin thing completely launches. The Reuters report said like four entities have submitted applications to launch the spot Bitcoin ETFs. In, it, it named three of them as the Hong Kong Units of China Asset Management, Harvest Fund Management and Bocera Asset Management. The SFC and the three companies identified uh, didn't immediately respond to a CoinDesk request for comment. So you know, guys, it's coming. And guys, this is going to be good. Yes, the fat cats and the corrupt government officials have a lot of money. And that money, my friends, is going to go to pumping our bags by the end of April. So if you're not DCAing and yet in Bitcoin, at least, you should be. Otherwise, you'll miss that inflow of money. I'm sure it'll be inflowing for a couple of months. But you want to get in on it initially, and there could be a pretty good price boost because of it. Grayscale looks like to be stop selling soon because their CEO has said that the large sales are largely behind us and we're reaching an equilibrium. Equilibrium, I think, means that the ins and outs of Grayscale or the inflows and outflows of Grayscale are finally becoming neutral. So if Grayscale becomes neutral, then BlackRock and Fidelity are just going to be positive, and that's going to make the price go up, obviously. So Grayscale CEO uh, says Bitcoin ETF outflows are reaching equilibrium. Michael, uh, Michael Sonison said the sum of the selling connected to settlements of bankrupt crypto companies like FTX is largely behind us. And remember, it was FTX and Genesis that really started the two big, like, I guess you call corrections. And But even with those corrections, we're up from about 46,000 to over 69,000. So up plus 50% despite those two corrections. Uh, after approval of the several spot Bitcoin ETFs in January, investors may have sold their GBTC shares to move into new projects. Uh, daily outflows from GBTC have fallen significantly since it's hitting $600 million in March. 
Obviously, like hitting that $600 million mark, that was because I believe either Genesis or FTX. And now since those are over, you're getting maximum sales of maybe $300 million per day and significantly less as well. So the amount is definitely coming down. Obviously, the amount people are buying is probably coming down as well as some of the interest kind of wanes, but there are still really big buying days. So Michael Sonison, CEO of digital asset investor manager at Grayscale, sees outflows from the company's Bitcoin exchange traded fund reaching equilibrium. Uh, he said that some of the selling connected to settlements of bankrupt US crypto companies like FTX is largely behind us and FTX caused Genesis too, so that's gone at this point. So that's like, you know, you're not gonna have a sudden dump of two, three billion dollars over the course of a week. And that's going to really help stabilize things in terms of outflows. And since those outflows were the main in, uh, trigger to these Bitcoin corrections or dumps, I think we're almost done with this as well. Obviously, there's going to be liquidation still. There's going to be still people taking profits. But a large source of actually us going downward has been destroyed. So another reason for the outflows of GBDC was comfortably higher fees compared to its competitors. Uncomfortably, actually. And this guy said last month that uh, he expects the fund fees to decrease over time, which probably like, um, you know, like makes people, soothes people enough for them to actually stay with Grayscale GBTC and prevents some of them from selling. So in the three months since the Bitcoin ETF has been launched, uh, the fund has seen outflows worth of $15 billion. That's roughly half of all of its assets. And Grayscale does not want to exit the market completely. And since it does not want to exit the market completely, um, it's going to lower those fees so people don't sell more of their product. So yes, Grayscale has incentive to lower the fees, which gives incentive for people to stay with Grayscale, which basically like says they're not selling and uh, that will control the outflows. And while inflows are still going to be positive from the other Bitcoin ETFs, that's just going to make our um, stuff go up. But I do think the retail buying of ETFs kind of has kind of like hit a uh, maximum. And we're waiting for a lot of the paperwork for the institutional buying to really begin because I don't think the institutional buying has even begun yet. The uh, other thing is some analysts have said like retail interest in crypto spot buying on the exchanges is quite low. Now, this is related to the ETF things because um, the people that would actually buy on the exchanges might be buying ETFs. Uh, a lot of the long-term buyers might be switching to ETFs because they think it's a safer option. Even though I don't really think it is, but they might think it is because you know the ETF doesn't actually provide uh, provide a, um, it doesn't provide like insurance against price action. It just provides insurance against you not getting scammed from the ETF by, uh, ETF sellers. So while Bitcoin and other digital asset prices are increasing, retail investors are not yet believing the hype, which is why altcoins have remained low. Now, the other thing is like, we're not at the point in the four year cycle where retail really comes in. We're not at the halving yet. And a lot of the action in previous cycles happens after the halving, in the year after the halving. So we're following the four year cycle on everything besides altcoins at this point. Because remember, altcoins do not have ETFs, so they're not enjoying the Bitcoin treatment right now. Ethereum is thinking about getting an ETF, but I think it will be denied in May. So that's probably going to retrace after May. So basically like the hype is there for Bitcoin and the hype is there for meme coins and maybe our AI and RWA, but the hype is not yet there for most altcoins. Obviously, like there's uh, certain ex uh, exceptions like Solana, but Solana's having a bit of trouble right now. And of course, Binance, despite the um, you know CZ stuff. But many of the coins that we've been following, uh, whether it be like Cardano, XRP, um, and even some like Dot, uh, Tron, Polygon, they really haven't hit that stride yet. It has actually been the new coins, but the older coins... And even some of the newer coins haven't reached that parabolic stage yet. You can see that Bitcoin dominance is still above 50%, which means the retail money really hasn't come in yet, except in a couple of niches. But they should come in after the halving. And I think that's one of the major effects of the halving right now is that um, because like the halving is coming, that psychological pent up pressure is going to be released and more people are going to come into retail after the halving. So we can see an altcoin explosion after the halving. 
But, you know, according to these analytics, the retail hasn't come in yet. We're not at that point in the cycle. So if your coin hasn't come up yet, I wouldn't fret because I do believe the money is still coming and it's going to come within the next few months. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.